Hello, everyone. Uh, when I was introduced to the idea of a dangerous idea, I was struck by the, the uh, story by Aesop, at least attributed to him, about belling the cat. For those of you who don't know the story, mice in the little village were getting picked off one after another by a stealthy cat. And the mice convened a conference to decide how they could best solve their problem. One little mouse raised a paw and said, what if we put a bell on the cat? Then we would always hear him coming. The mice cheered. It was a brilliant idea until one wise old mouse at the back timidly raised his hand and said, and who's going to put the bell on the cat? <laughs> so there's a dangerous idea. And, <laughs> and for me, the, the cat is a metaphor for stealthy and seductive advertising strategies. And the, the bell will be uh, those who are clever enough to expose its devices. Just a bit of background, I'm an art educator at the University of Victoria, and of course I'm interested in museum art, fine art, contemporary painting, and all those kinds of things. I love them dearly, but I also acknowledge that the kind of art that most affects us is advertising art. We see it hundreds of times in a single day. We see it every day. And so the sum total or effect of advertising on us as a society and us as individuals is immense, far greater, I would say, and argue than is fine art, important as that is. Now, multinational corporations maintain economic supremacy by mounting brilliant campaigns to advertise their products. Of course they do. If no one knew about them, they wouldn't be buying them and they wouldn't be at the top of the heap. Those ads can be seductively persuasive. To expose this form of propaganda, and propaganda it is because it presents only one point of view. There's no room for debate. An advertisement is a pitch. It's a point of view. To expose this, we need to recognize the ways images and slogans can persuade us. We must become visually literate. In our society, I would argue that we are very literate when it comes to reading and writing. We would read a text or listen to a speech and we would critique it. We would take it apart. We would recognize its logical flaws. However, when it comes to the visual world, we're not nearly so adept at reading its messages and critiquing it. We kind of take it in and we have a feeling about it and that's about where it ends. We must also hear the other side of the story, adverse effects of products that endanger our health, for example. <coughs> I don't know anyone in the room who doesn't know who this gentleman is. This is Kentucky Fried Chicken's Colonel Sanders. I remember in the 1960s watching him on television, a stately gentleman dressed in a white suit and talking about his fried chicken. Now all we, we've reduced him to a graphic like this and we call him KFC because he's one of the family. We don't need to be more formal than that. And so if you think about the way that logos have become simpler and simpler year after year, and how Toronto Dominion has become TD Bank and so forth, we get this uh, view of familiarity. It's so ubiquitous that we don't have to waste words. We know what we're talking about. There is advertising, of course, on magazines, and magazine advertising is ubiquitous. Uh, this is a photograph I took in the United States, and the corporations like McDonald's raise their flag almost as though they planted a flag on the moon. Everywhere they go, they want you to know that they're not very far away. And if you need to find one in a hurry, uh, it's only 500, I'm assuming, clown feet away. <laughs> it has been argued that our c commitment to God and to country has been replaced by commitment to multinationals and their products. People proudly wear a Nike swoosh on their t-shirts, for instance, advertising because that's their brand and, and they're part of that tribe. And so this is a bit of a spook. It has two virtuous looking young people hand over their heart, looking up almost as though they were listening to a stirring anthem, which I imagine would be the McDonald's jingle. I'm also reminded that in the 1960s, there was uh, propaganda art posters actually from mainland China. And they look very much like this. In fact, astonishing like this. All you need to do is to place a little red book in their hand and you've got it. <laughs> We're all a sucker for kids. 
uh, who doesn't love babies? And so this is a, makes two points. The first is that uh, babies get our attention. Advertisers know that. We're softies. We can't help ourselves. But more than that, the ad says, if you can't get children by the age of two and target them incessantly between the ages of three and eight, they become lifelong consumers of your product. And so marketing begins before language begins, before children are even able to speak. They recognize logos, they point, they scream, uh, they want something, whether it's in the breakfast suit, food, cereal aisle of Safeways or wherever it happens to be. So do you want fries with that? That's what the bonnet is saying. This, that market, by the way, is called teenies. And it has alarmed a number of parent groups who've decided that uh, children that young, that impressionable, shouldn't be targeted incessantly. And so there is an advocacy group. There are our advocacy groups that oppose that. Most of what I will show you comes from Adbusters magazine. You probably know about it. You've probably seen it in bookstores and on newspaper stands. And this is uh, showing you that McDo the, the um, Adbusters has been around for over 20 years and is still growing strong. They're belling the cat, in a way, and culture jamming or ad busting is what they do. You can see that Ronald McDonald has a, a, a gag order. He's not allowed to tell you what's in the food. And he looks a little alarmed. Now, as far as the uh, belling the cat is concerned, ad busters has to have legal protection because these multinationals have enormously deep pockets and they can launch suits against the company and they will always, the company will always, the ad busters will always win because they are, uh, have a freedom of expression and parody and satire is, is what they do. One of the things that uh, ad busters does is that they take these major campaigns and McDonald's, for instance, invests millions of dollars in making sure we know their logo and making sure that their product looks appealing to us. And so their, their slogan, there's a little McDonald's in everyone, um, came about, I think, because there were more burgers sold than people on the planet. However, what they don't say is that there's a lot of McDonald's in some people. And this raises the specter of childhood obesity which, uh, and um, other I related illnesses that uh, result in uh, a serious health risk. And so parent groups are concerned. And it's that kind of concern that, that causes the uh, fast food companies, for instance, to, to try to correct the perception. Let me show you some ads that come from a very successful campaign by Absolute Vodka. What they recognized early on is that when you open a magazine, the page that you're looking at has about two seconds to get your attention. If it doesn't succeed, you turn the page and they've wasted their advertising dollar. They get you to stay on longer because you recognize this. You've seen it before. It's a puzzle. Somewhere buried in that uh, lovely image, is a vodka bottle shape. Can you find it? Uh, well, I remember singing in a Christmas tree one year, and I don't remember standing in that formation. So you associate or attach those good feelings about holidays and travel to exotic places to the product. They, they come together for you, and they make a, a unified impression which stays in our minds. And so who wouldn't want to wake up in this lovely morning in Venice to see a golden sky, or perhaps it's the end of the day, but it's such a lovely exotic, would, wouldn't you want to be there kind of place? The one puzzle for me is how they got the pigeons to line up that way. This is ad busters speaking back. They've used the vodka bottle shape, but this time it's really quite dark humor. It's a toe tag, dead on arrival, and it's in a mortuary, and then Nearly 50% of automobile fatalities are linked to alcohol. 10% of North Americans are alcoholics. A teenager sees 100,000 ads bef uh, before reaching legal driving age. Now, this is the sort of thing, perhaps, maybe it's a bit too dark for mad mothers against drunk driving. But it certainly makes a point that we had only been hearing one side of the story. Maybe to correct the balance, we need to hear another side. This is an AA meeting. 
And again, it's not hard to find the absolute vodka uh, bottle. What's funny for me is that the original image that was produced in Adbusters didn't have that stain on the carpet. And so I inspected the magazine, and then I realized that that was a grease stain that came from my a colleague who had it too close to his lunch. So, so a good ad became even better. <laughs> this is a photograph of a billboard I took in Columbus where I did my doctorate. Uh, billboards are everywhere. They, they darken the sky. Marlboro cigarettes, the cowboy image, is wild and rugged and outdoors. And Marlboro succeeded admirably on targeting men because it was such a macho kind of image, but they realized that they were missing half the population. So they created a Marlboro Lights for women, and this is it. Now you'll notice that the Surgeon General requires this statement at the bottom. Pregnant women who smoke risk fetal injury and mature, premature birth. But who, who reads the fine print? You see these on pharmaceutical ads as well. I would call it the sandwich ad, where it starts with something lovely and you all want it. And then there's a, a break in the middle that says your head may explode. And then it f ends with something that, that you're right back to where it used to be. Just a, a <laughs> <laughs> just a few months ago, I read in the newspaper that the Marlboro cow cowboy died of lung cancer. And, and I thought, well, that's, that's sad. It's sad when anybody dies. but. Uh, is anybody paying attention? And so this is a campaign that was launched by the California Department of Health. And here is one cowboy talking to another about a, a real health risk. The government of Canada tried to put on, to, uh, put on uh, cigarette packages ugly ads of, of what you could look like if you smoked too early and too long. And I don't think it was effective at all. And the government of Canada finally had to admit uh, a year or so ago, that it just wasn't influencing anybody. Nobody was actually buying it. I think this is far more persuasive. Now, Adbusters is not just about exposing the strategies of the major corporations and multinationals. It's also about speaking to you and to me as consumers. And so we are in a consumerist society. And this particular image points out that the barcode, which is the symbol of all things purchasable, if there is such a word, there is now, um, and it looks like a jail or a prison break. These people, little stick figures, are, are breaking free and leaping out and running away. And as they ex escape to the right, they th become thickened little, little figures. And at first, I didn't pay any attention to what was written below because I, I don't expect to be able to read that code. But as I struggled through it, I began to think, that looks like escape captivity. This is another campaign or another approach that Adbusters has uh, initiated. It looks like a genuine bona fide product. And so right at the top right corner is a big starburst, new. And that gets our attention because we, we care about what's new. And then bric-a-brac, it's fast, easy, safe, and disposable as seen on TV. Do you need to read more, really? Aren't you con convinced already? And then it says, there has never been a better time to buy tiny plastic balls with no function whatsoever. <laughs> Available illicitly at Walmart, part of the Walmart Centennial Society multimedia series special. Not one, but four exclamation marks, $9.99. And so on the back, in case you need directions, you open the package, shake the little balls, hold them in your palm, enjoy the experience, and then drop it into a garbage can. Now, the idea is that these would be taken into Walmart and left uh, as product on a shelf. It's the opposite of shoplifting. I, I, I have to wonder if they stayed around to see who, who actually bought, picked up one of these things and took it to the cash register because it wouldn't scan. But anyway, that's the point. There's also a campaign called Buy Nothing Day. Almost every day is a day to to reach into your wallet for some reason or other, and all kinds of special occasions are spend days. The biggest spend day in the United States is Black Friday, which is uh, right after Thanksgiving. Here, it's Boxing Day. And so that binge of purchasing uh, is countered by this ad saying, are you really tough enough to keep your wallet in your pocket for a whole day? Do you think you could do that? This is a challenge. 
especially on that day. And so you see the uh, triangle, the pyramid with the American dollar eye, weeping big tears, and on it goes. So just as an acknowledgement, many of the counter ads shown in this presentation come from the pages of Adbusters magazine. I want to thank editor Cal Lassen for permission to use these images. Adbusters is headquartered in Vancouver, and I like to think that he's belling the cat. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>